Hey, the reason I got this coat on, this black leather jacket, which I don't, I don't think I've worn, because I just bought it at a thrift shop, uh, but it looks cool, is because of the, the uh, guest I have today. And I had Charles Shaughnessy on. He's from London, and she's from London, and she's just very classy. Um, and I'm actually very honored to have her on here. Uh, she has done... <laughs> The Kobe's dynasty, and you all know her from General Hospital as Holly Scorpio or Holly Sutton. I don't know. It's maybe it's Holly Sutton Scorpio. Okay, it is Emma Sams. There she is. Look at her. Look at her. <laughs> nice jacket. <laughs> How you doing? Um, I'm all right. <laughs> I just had some. Very busy day. You worked a lot. Work. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. If, forgive me if my voice is a bit croaky. But by the way, the accent, I love it that it fools all Americans. I know. Because they just assume that you're very well educated, that you're very smart. And of course, that is not true one bit. But you know, Charles said the same thing you just said. He's like, you know, it's the accent that everybody thinks you're intelligent yeah. and this and this and that. Um, he is a sweetie, isn't he? He's a sweetheart, yeah. And he's on. He's actually on Sun tomorrow. And uh, he was fantastic. And it was great. Where, so you grew up in London. Yes. How was that? Um, it was, it's a nice, nice place to grow up. Um, um, I was a... Ballet dancer. Yeah. So I was sent off to boarding school when I was about 11 to the Royal Ballet School, which makes you very independent to be away at that age. Um, wow. Uh, but I liked it. It was, um, it was a real honor to be at that school because they auditioned thousands of children and only let in... How many? Um, each year, I think it's only 21 or 22. And then... During uh, your tenure there, which is about five or six years, they keep an eye on you. They weigh, they measure you, they watch how hard you're working, they watch how well you're performing. And if you don't um, meet their criteria in any of those ways, um, they throw you out of the school. So every year um, you have what they call assessments. And um, if you didn't pass, you, you, you didn't get through. But how many years year. were you in there? Uh, I was there for six years. Wait, okay. You were how old when you started? Eleven. And then you're there six years? I mean, I went home for Christmas. I know, but <laughs> I could not have... E at eleven, I, I yeah. was scared. I would be scared to leave home. Yeah. For even uh, a little bit amount of time. But there are some boarding schools, you know, where the kids go at aged eight. So 11 was, was not unusual. It's amazing because Charles talked about the same thing too, <laughs> about boarding schools. <laughs> but I'm fascinated. It's going to get different soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but Emma, I'm fascinated yeah. by it because how I grew up, there wasn't that. No. No, here in America, if you're sent off to boarding school, it's more like a punishment, isn't it? Yeah. Like, like a military school yeah. because you've been naughty. So... What is the positive of that, you think, of going to boarding school and the negative, if there is any negative? Um, the negative is that you uh, drift apart from your family. I, right. Uh, inevitably. Um, and um, the positive is that you become quite self-sufficient. Exactly. And whether you think that that's a good thing or not, I do personally think that's a very good thing. Um, it's probably a bit premature to be self-sufficient at, you know, 12. Um, but it served me well over the years, I think. Let me tell you something. And this, this is really cool for me because I'm, I think people who can live on their own are incredible because you have to understand, my mom's going to be upset. I know she is, but it's all right. I was kind of sheltered. So... I don't know what it's I don't know what it's like to uh, wash clothes. Still. No, still. Because <gasps> Emma, 
That's quite a confession. I love saying your name, Emma. <laughs> Emma, I, I went from one mother to another mother. I've always had a mother that did everything for me. And that's not healthy. No. Now, the good thing about what's happened is, now I stay here alone. I, 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 I never even lived alone, you know? Mm. So people who live, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So uh, at least I can live alone. And I don't have a problem being alone now. You did have a problem being alone. Mm. But I can't do anything. But sometimes being that independent and self-sufficient is a curse because it means that you don't ever allow yourself to rely on anyone. And okay, I became very used to my own company, so much so that I found it very hard to live with anyone. Oh. And that's not good either. Um so I need a lot of space. I need a lot of time alone. I need time alone. Um, and if, I, if I'm if i very busy and there's a lot of people around me too close, I get quite sort of um, anxious. So it's a bit of a, it's an introvert um, trait. Yeah. Um, but I guess I'm one of those people who's an introvert who often appears to be an extrovert. I get And that's you. quite tricky because because you're not necessarily flagging and you know advertising to the world your true self, which is that you just want to be left alone. Oh. <laughs> now, what about mental health? Do you have any, any mental health? or? I've been very lucky. No, um, no, no. no. It, it's, um, I, I, I think when I was quite a lot younger, I got uh, a few, I had a few panic attacks. Yes. Um, which are really scary. Oh. Um, and I sort of managed to identify that that's what they were mm -hmm. um, and then managed to sort of talk myself out of it. Um, just, you know, that it's, it, it's the fear of fear. It's, it's, it's nothing's going to really happen. Nothing's going to really happen. And even if it feels like it's happening, it's actually not happening. So I had a word with myself <laughs> and uh, managed to... to get past that yeah well you know it's like i don't know if you know anything about my history but i've had you know everything so there are now we're talking anxiety a little bit there most anxiety uh, speaking from you know i've gotten off two planes and mm. it's been crazy uh it passes yeah okay but there are panic attacks anxiety if you can imagine how scary that feeling is because you felt it and it doesn't go away. Oh, 24 I, can't I can't imagine. What for months. Like. Horrendous. Her, oh, no, it's, it's, it's you. It, and that, that kind of, it's happened twice to me in my life. But it's usually when really horrible things are going on in my life. And a lot of that is stress. Yes. Oh, completely. Right? Yeah. But usually... You can talk yourself out of, you know, whatever. You get through it. It passes in an hour or 15 minutes. And I call Freddy Krueger up there saying to me, I'm back. And I'm like, you ain't getting me. But there's sometimes when it's too, so much mm. that it doesn't go. And I'm talking 24-7. But then you would surely have to resort to medication. Oh, yeah, for, positively. But what I'm talking about, and I know people are probably going... Not again, Marie, it's on state of mind talking about, but during the pandemic, I couldn't find anybody. Yeah. It took four months. Gosh. And well, the pandemic has been... Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, for so many people, lockdown was unimaginably difficult. Yes. To the thought of, you know, for people who had small children and who couldn't take them outside, people who lived in an apartment that didn't have any outside space... Um, people who were who, who didn't get on with the people that they were living with. Yeah. Um, h horrendous. Yes. Um, I was very blessed. I mean, even though I was unwell, at least I was in a house that had, sp you know, space around it. So if I needed to get outside. That wasn't a. And who was? How many people in your house? Um, it's well, my husband. Right. It's our wedding anniversary tomorrow for one wow. year. One year, just one year, but congratulations! It's been fantastic, um, and 
and and my daughter is there sometimes, um, and my son is there occasionally. Now, were your because ki- my kids? It was it was it was so. I was dying literally. You know, thoughts and all that, but they were having the greatest time in their lives. So, <laughs> I wish I could redo it. Yeah. And then it didn't have that great a time. Yeah. But, you know, I'd be in my room only. And they're all basketball, ping pong, having a good time. Yeah. How was it for you? Well, I was very unwell. You know, I, I got COVID very early on in the pandemic. I got it in March of 2020. I'd been oh. doing a telethon in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, which I do every year. I've done the Starlight? It. No, it's for ch- a children's charity called Variety. Oh. And I've been doing that for uh, co-hosting it for, I think it's about 34 years now. Wow. <laughs> and um, so we were coming back and there was, you know, a lot of talk on the news about this virus that was mostly in China and um, we changed planes in Chicago. And I think that must be where I picked it up. But within a week of getting back home, I was very unwell. And... Um, and early on, more fear, right? More fear, more um, of a virulent strain. Uh, st- it was it was definitely nastier then, and of course, no no um, vaccine. We hadn't invented it yet, so I had no vaccines on board. They didn't know anything about the virus, um, so they didn't know how to treat it. They didn't know it was transmitted by airborne. Um, uh, they di- they thought it was it was just touch so that was the whole you know wash your hands wash your hands yeah yeah everything don't touch your face and now of course we realize that that it's so much more than that um and and they were no there was no tests available really so the only way you got tested for it was if you were admitted to hospital um and anyway so I, i i had to go to the hospital a few times but i didn't get admitted thank goodness um one time an ambulance came out to me because my breathing was so bad. But again, they didn't take me in. Uh, and then I started to feel a little better, was m- very relieved. And being the kind of person that I am, which is very busy, very active, very proactive, um, always got lots of things to do. So I w- went out and did some gardening and then got very unwell again, and I have not got well since. No. I still have. I'm not going to bore you with all No, no, I, I'm, I'm actually into this. I, I have still got breathing issues. Um, I feel like there's an elephant sitting on my chest almost all the time. It's a horrible feeling of not being able to catch my breath properly. So this is long COVID, yeah, they call it. this is long COVID. But they... Nobody knew there was such a thing as long COVID. Right. Um, I have still no taste or smell, and it's been two and a half years now. Um, I have massive fatigue um, to the point where I can barely move. If I've done a huge <sighs> um, effort to, 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 to do something, uh, there'll be a consequence to that. Um, but the worst part of all for me was that when I started going to doctors to say, why can't I still breathe properly? They approached it with, and they were doctors who didn't know me, so they would look at me as a woman of a certain age, as right. we, as we say, um, and they would say, so how are things at home? Oh my and God. And I knew what that meant, which is, it's it's all in your head. Yes, this is anxiety. Course. This is of course um, somatization, you know, which is the physical symptoms that are produced by an emotional source, and um, and I was furious, really outraged, because first of all, I at this point knew more about it than them because I'd been reading up on all of the papers and right. research that was finally beginning to happen. Secondly, a post-viral syndrome is not an unusual thing. Um, but there are other viruses that cause a, a post-viral syndrome like Lyme disease, even Ebola. There's a post-Ebola right. syndrome, post-polio. 
um, ME is something that those poor people have been fighting for their for, to be listened to, to be believed, to be heard for so many years. Um, so every doctor out there should have thought, well, there's a possibility this is going to cause an uh, ongoing post-viral syndrome. So we should keep an eye out for that. But a lot of them didn't. I mean, some of them did. Yeah. But a lot of them didn't. And those of us who have found ourselves in this situation, not only are we struggling to do, do everything that we need to do in our life. I mean, this work that I've been doing this last month is the first work I've done in two and a half years. No! But that's how unwell I've been. And um, so not only have we been struggling to do what we need to do. Yeah. And I haven't got little kids, so thank goodness I don't have little kids because I don't know how I would have kept no, my taking care of how's them. But the we've also had to fight to be heard, to be believed. Yes. And that's the worst part. And the taste. How, is, how do you not taste? It's so food, you can't, when you put food, what no, does it taste like? Nothing. If it's bitter, I, I'm aware that it's bitter. If it's spicy, hot, spicy, I can tell that. It will still burn my mouth. But I can't tell the difference between tea and coffee still. Were you somebody who loved food? No. Uh, Thank goodness. Yeah. Thank, and, and actually, as an actress, that's quite useful. Right. You know, I, I don't live to eat. Yeah, I, yeah, I get eat you. I to live, live. And again, you know, I'm very fortunate because if I was a chef, or if I was oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. wine expert, yeah, or, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people whose careers could be quite uh, scuppered by that. Yeah, that would be not good. Mm. You, your brother passed away? Yes. At a young age? Yes, he was eight when I was nine. How did that, how did that affect you? And Well, long term, I'd say that it affected me in in making me not afraid of dying. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. So that was a real gift from him. Um, wow. It, it made me much more um, seize the day kind of yeah. person. Yeah. A busy person because I'm not, you know, putting things off. Yeah. Uh, if you can die when you're eight, you know, that's a bit of an eye-opener. He had a blood disease? Yes, it was a blood disease called aplastic anemia. Um, of course, the effect that it had on my family was quite uh, devastating, and in particular for my mother. And since I had children myself, then you realize a bit yes. more what yeah. she was going through. Um, but it also m prompted me to, as soon as I started my career, um, and had a platform that could be useful yeah like yourself yes just to make the most of it yes and that's why i started the starlight children yeah Foundation. oh that's why you started mm. because i knew what those families were going wow. through yes because i had been there so we always looked after not just the child who was unwell but the siblings because i knew that they needed a bit of a treat as well because they were going through something very difficult as well how long have you been with that organization um Gosh, well, I started it when I started on General Hospital. <laughs> so it was nearly 40 years. That's I've been doing General Hospital for 40 years. So you're like a newbie compared to me. Yeah, I'm 30 years. <laughs> but that's phenomenal that you've been doing that for 40 years. Because it's no joke. No. It's, it's you're serious. Oh, yeah. And we've, we've now got, um, there's Starlight Children's Foundation helping thousands of children all wow. around the world. So we've got in the United States, and we've got uh, Canada, and we've got Australia and the UK. Wow. And in fact, it is the biggest children's charity in Australia. But I have to say, I can't take any credit for the Australian branch whatsoever because they are they just took it and ran with it. You oh, know, they, they, did? they Yes. They, they are amazing and very efficient at what they do and very successful. And yes, I can take no credit for it. Yeah. That. And there's a, you know, because I, you know, I have to do my research and stuff. You befriended a boy named Sean? That's, that's kind of how, how the, it became a charity because I, the first film that I did when I was 17 in the UK, um, and I played a princess, wow. and um, 
there was a premiere to raise money for the children's hospital that my brother had been in, which is called Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital in, in London. Mm -hmm. And so the premiere was, was um, a, a, a big event. And the same day as it, the, I think it was Princess Margaret came to the... Wow. I mean, it was, quite, you know, it was quite a big deal. And um, the same day they showed the film to the kids in the hospital um, because it was a, a family film. And then the next day after that, I went to visit them. And they had just seen me as the princess. And mostly the little girls were very pleased yeah. to meet me. Um, and then there was one little boy called Sean who was 11 and was going in for surgery on a brain tumor. And he was they were doing the surgery through the back of his mouth. So he was completely immobilized with a metal oh. frame. So it was drilled into his skull here and here and then big metal bars and then drilled into yeah, his pelvis. Yeah. Um, he had he had every tube in him you can imagine. And um, so I sort of popped my head around the door and said, did you film see the film yesterday? And he said, yes. I said, oh, well, what did you think of it? And he said, it was rubbish. <laughs> 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 and that's... You, that's so we just, we just had this fantastic conversation where he was basically really mean to me. Yeah. And, um, and then that evening... One of the nurses called me at home, tracked me down, and said, um, would you just promise to come back after Sean's operation? Because it really cheered him up. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And how long were you friends? And well, then he had the surgery, and um, they weren't able to remove all of the tumor. So we knew that he didn't have very long left. Damn. So I would go and visit him, and I got to know his family. And then we realized that, you know, we had to really make the most of his time. Yeah. And by then I had moved to, to here, to Los Angeles, and was working as a waitress. You know, I mean, I was really <laughs> struck. The classic, the classic yeah. role in... What in restaurant? Beverly. It was a deli. I don't think it's there anymore in, uh. in Beverly Hills. I worked just the lunch hour. And they <laughs> said, oh, you can have some lunch whilst you're here. So, right. So I ate fiendishly the whole time I was there <laughs> from 11 till 3 wow. and then didn't eat the rest of the day couldn't afford to so <laughs> so um so we brought him out I brought him out. I flew him and his mother out and took them uh, to Disneyland because that you know Disneyland yeah. is the thing and especially what it was at the time then yeah and and I and I going around Disneyland I realized gosh you know, this has made a huge difference, not just to him, but, you know, I looked at his mother's face as she was watching him have a good time for a change. Wow. Uh, so it was just profoundly, um, it, it, it really was good for my psychology because when my brother was ill, I hadn't been able to do anything mm. to help him. Um, I was nine. I couldn't help him. I couldn't help my parents, yeah. what they were going through. And yeah. I, I was so frustrated by that. Um, and that has sat with me all the, all the way as I was growing up. And then this was addressing that frustration yeah. in, a, in a very positive way. So it was, it, was a, it was a nice thing to do for him, but it was also a nice thing to do for myself. And, mm. then, and then my cousin and I started, um, we just thought, right, well, let's do this. Let's do more of these, you know. That really? Yeah. That's, I think that's, man, now I want to do something. You are doing I something. know, I know, but you know. So let's get into, I mean, what you've said so far is, is beautiful. It really is. It's beautiful. But I, we got to get, let's get into. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I've had on here, you know, everybody, you know, and I call you guys, I don't want to say legends. You guys paved the way, man. And then I came and screwed it all up. You know? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, you know, you know, Luke and Laura, you know, Holly, you know, all these, you know, I have, I've had Mon I've had Leslie on here, I've had Ken and Jackie. And I'm and I'm a little kid in a candy store because <laughs> I just want to know what it was like because at that time. It wasn't like it is now. You guys were movie stars. It was, it was right? huge. It was, okay. It was huge. But 
I came in post Luke and Laura, and they had been trying to find mm. they'd been trying to find another love interest for Tony Geary to work with. Oh, that's and right. So they tried Demi Moore. She she was on the show when I started, yeah, yeah. and that didn't work. No. Janine Turner. Beautiful wow, Janine, Janine Turner. Turner right. That didn't work. The audience were not ready. They were not having it. You know, they right. were not going to accept right. him with anyone other than Jeannie. And um, then I was the third attempt to, f to find a love interest for Luke. And um, I didn't know any of that because I had not watched the show, oh. thankfully. So I didn't know, I had not grown up with the show because I grew up in England. Didn't know who Luke and Laura were, just knew. Came in, did multiple auditions, eventually did a screen test with Tony, who was so nice to me. Oh, he's so the nicest guy in the world. Oh, and spectacularly patient, yeah. um, generous, taught me how to, taught me basically how to act, but certainly taught me how to listen when, when yeah. you're acting, yeah. um, which is more than 50% yeah. of it, I think. Um, and then, of course, Gloria Monti, who was terrifying, yes. but brilliant. Yes. Uh, and the pace was much slower, so there was time to hone things. Yeah. Um, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I came in very naive, and that was the advantage I had, which was I didn't know how terrified I should have been. Yeah. And um, and I think by then the audience were like, oh, all right, you know. It was, and I was so different too. Now, did it work? Or yeah, I mean, it, I, the characters were together for a while and enough that. And then it was the old, you know, classic love triangle. Yeah, right, Scorpio right. And, and it was a huge story. And we did remote shoots in Canada Damn. and Texas. And um, it was fantastic. And I absolutely loved it. But then and you I would still be there now. I mean, permanently, if, if they would have had me all that time. Oh, really? I would never have left voluntarily, ever, except I got offered... But then you the started making big time... Well, I got offered that job whilst I was still doing General Hospital. You got offered Dynasty. Yeah. So... And how... And that show was enormous at okay, the time. Okay, so what... Let, let me... Because now I'm, this is getting me a little... So you're on GH. You get offered Dynasty. Mm. Dynasty had already been going on? Yes, this was... Oh, so it was already big. It was massive. Oh, so you got offered something big. Yeah. Nighttime, worldwide. Yes. Uh, unbelievable. Then you do that for how long? Five years. Damn. I've been very lucky. <laughs> You've been very lucky, yeah. I, absolutely. So, I uh, well, can't imagine the money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's cool. So, five years. Now, then that ends. Yes. They did a spin-off, the Colbys. Okay, the Colbys. You did that, too. Did that, too. Then when that finished... Not Falcon Crest. No. <laughs> no. Okay, so you did Kobe. Well, well, then what? You didn't want to go back to GH? or? Well, I have been back. You didn't have to I go know. back. I've, but I've... Oh, you go back, back and, and forth. Back yeah. and forth. So I've done some movies. I've done some other TV. I did another, right. another Aaron Spelling show called Models, Inc., which was really... Oh, yeah, Models, fun. Inc. Um, um, so I've done sort of various things, but always on occasion, gone back to General Hospital, which has sometimes been an, a positive experience, and sometimes it wasn't great. The story wasn't... Yes. Um, didn't really... The, my, the way they wrote my character didn't feel authentic. Um, that happens. Yeah. So so there's there's been a lot of back and forth, and then I moved back to England, which, oh. made, it, which made it more of a... a, of a Big deal to, to come back and do it, but I, I still did it once six years ago. Um, but I so I moved back to England because I wanted to raise my children. I in get the you. UK. I get you. Um, I didn't want them to be around the insanity of. Yeah. I mean, I always say that it's hard enough to be a grown up in Los Angeles, <laughs> let alone a child. Exactly. And um, so my kids, I didn't put them. Uh, on television or in photographs, yeah. except uh, other than when they were infants, and then after that, I, I didn't use, I didn't use them for any publicity or promotion yeah. or anything. My, my son is, <laughs> he's on the he's on the rise. So I 
But my other kids, they could care less about this stuff. Neither of my kids are interested in my career at all, which is actually fantastic. You Okay, Emma, you say it's fantastic. Yes. And I agree with you. Yeah. But can I get a little love from my children sometimes about... <laughs> oh, no, I get love from them. No, I'm not talking about that kind of love. Like, they hate that I'm on social media. Oh, they I hate that I do this. Yeah. And it's like, I have to tell them, hey, look how great. And they're yeah. like, yeah, okay, Dad, that's good. I mean, you know, I, I get it. It's, it's I shouldn't but, uh, it, want it. It's but. embarrassing enough to have a parent <laughs> that's, uh, you know, on television. That's bad enough. Actually, I, it's embarrassing enough to have a parent. You know, <laughs> Period. Um, <laughs> but, but yes, they don't want you to stand out. No. I mean, when I used but to... But what is that? When I went to school to pick them up, it was really tricky to know what to wear, how to present myself, because you didn't want to dress up too much, because they then they're like, oh, who does she think she is? And also, you don't want to look too, you know, sort of sloppy, because then they'd be like, oh, she's let herself go. Right. <laughs> But see, I, that's why I like state of mind because I get to hear it from the other side because I think it's just me. No, no. I like I'm the only one that kids think like, shut I, up, Dad. I think it's a compliment that my kids don't think of me in terms of my career. It means that okay. I'm their mother. That That's the primary, most dominant um, thing when they think of me. I get is you. Is that I'm Dang, their mother. Dang, that's and a that's, good... And that's what I want. That's what they need I love and that. It, and, and, and actually, even though it is a bit odd that they've never seen anything I've acted in, I don't think. But, <laughs> but actually, I think that's a really good thing. It means that, that they really felt like my role to them was all about You're being right. their mother. You're right. And I have to say, You're right. touch wood, they've turned out really well. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're Mine have too. And my, my, my daughter just got a degree in math. Yeah. And she's stunningly beautiful. So the world is her oyster now. She's, yes. you know, she's got this stamp of, yes, I'm really a smart cookie. And then she looks like That's right. the most stunning Same thing. I got a daughter seen. like that. And and my son just qualified as a doctor. He's a junior. Dang. So so actually it's quite surprising. It's taken me this long of, of us chatting for me to have mentioned that. I do tend to say it quite a lot. My son, the doctor. He knows how, how proud I am. And my daughter knows too. You know, it's funny, and I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble, but I can just cut this out. But we just had a scene, and I got to be honest with you. Uh, you said, I said, this is my friend from, I don't think we've had, uh, look, Em, I'm not trying to be like, I don't remember you because I would remember you. I don't think we've had a scene together. Ever <laughs> That's before. what. No, I think so. I think this this time that we Ugh. our characters and it was very brief, but I think that's the first time our, ca our characters have ever met. You know, then I should have said something. <laughs> Who are <Be> you? <laughs> yeah, like because I should have said like I don't. Wh why is she my friend from the past? Yeah, and we weren't. I don't think I've worked with her. No. Maybe if we did, it's like in passing. I don't think so at all. That yeah, was kind of weird. Yeah. But I did it anyway. I just said it because I, I would want to go home with it. <laughs> if you start asking too many questions, it's always, yeah. And then all the other actors in the crew look at you <laughs> like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> but that was. I figure we've heard of each other. If not. Yeah, more. we've heard of each Our other. Our characters but would be well aware of each other. So let's. that's what I was I get you. justifying. But I've worked with Scorp with Tristan. Mm. So we, that you'd know of yeah, I would of you, but, but they wrote it like we're like, this is my great friend from the, and then she's yeah. like, what? <sighs> all right, I think we've covered it all. This has been like a, it's been cool because, yeah, I did cover everything. My goodness. Um, There's one thing. Yes, let's talk. Um, which I would like to encourage people, which is that I, you know. <laughs> Oh, boy, Ooh. now you're going to have to hold it. Okay. Twen so for the last 20 years, I've lived on my own. I've been single mother, very happily so. Mm -hmm. But um, a year ago, I got married, and, and I never thought I'd get married again. Wow. And uh, I just would like people to know that actually it can happen, you know? Yeah. That, that even if you're convinced that you're better off on your own, um, and some people are, obviously. But 
So there might be somebody out there who just happens to be exactly the right match for you and who's, who's kind and willing to sort of, you know, be ad- ad- adapt to your quirks yeah. and that his quirks aren't so, you know, tricky that it's not in any way an effort to adapt to them. And you suddenly find yourself thinking, my goodness, so, so that there is such a thing as a happy, easy, comfortable relationship for me, and I never thought I would find that. Wow, so, I love it. Yeah. So and I have to say, after this conversation, any man would be lucky to have you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean that. It's it's been it's been like uh, I don't know, like we're old friends, and it's like we've never talked really. Yeah. We've kind of nodded. In yeah, the we go like that. Hey, what's hey, up? Hey. But it's yeah. like no, uh, this is a real treat. It's I'm nice. So pleased you asked me. Oh, this has just been like. Like I always say with state of mind, it's like a, I, I treat it like a first date, <laughs> right? Like the, even a man or a woman, yeah. I treat it like, so where you grow up? Oh, man, you know, I yeah. went through this and you go through that. And that's kind of what I, and this was real like that. It was nice and easy and I appreciate you coming. And you said some, two things that were profound and like I don't remember them, but they were profound. It made me go, yes, that's, I got to do that. All right. Anyway, thank you. You're the best. State of mind, Emma Sams, not Falcon Crest, <laughs> Dynasty. <laughs>